Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you guys are waking up and feeling great out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far as we're cruising a little bit closer to that weekend. Got you some update information on multiple things in this morning's video. Of course, the first thing we will discuss is the tropics. We'll talk about what's going on with this tropical wave of interest right at this moment out in the Atlantic. We'll discuss the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We'll talk about the model guidance from overnight into this morning. Uh, there's definitely some uh, wacky model guidance that continues. Uh, you know, we talked about it in uh, yesterday evening's video about all the crazy scenarios showing up from these models. Well, they are continuing from overnight into this morning's model guide. So we're going to talk about all that. Uh, then we're going to talk about the environment out ahead of this system that could promote gradual strengthening of this tropical wave, eventually becoming Debbie, I do think, in my personal opinion. And then we're going to discuss steering currents, which in my opinion is a pretty important segment of this update on the tropics because I'm going to explain why some of this model guidance shows what it shows uh, and why it's getting steered and all these crazy ways doing these loop-de-loops making multiple landfalls i'm going to explain what's driving this <laughs> why is it showing this and why i do think this is going to be a forecast nightmare so after we do all that we are going to talk about what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire lower 48 uh, we'll talk about how a pretty large uh, section of the country does run that risk of strong to severe storms once again for today. I don't think it'll be as intense as yesterday and the day before, or may even the day before that, but there will be an opportunity for it again uh, today. So timestamps are up throughout the entire video for you folks to take advantage of. I uh, understand, once again, I know I've said this multiple times, not everybody has all the time to spend 45 minutes on a video talking about the weather, but this is the only way I know how to do it. This is the way I flow the best. Uh, so definitely take advantage of those timestamps that are just put throughout the entire video that you can just jump ahead to certain sections of the video. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It's very important. It helps to get these videos out there. And more importantly, if you folks got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please, please put those in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling this morning. So if you're wondering where this tropical wave is, it's right here. And, you know, all you're seeing is a bunch of colors right here and these yellows, oranges, reds, even some blacks. Uh, this indicates colder cloud tops, which tells us, you know, the higher these clouds are up in the atmosphere, the stronger the updraft, the taller the updraft, which means we have some pretty deep convection. And that's what we're getting. This is a wide open, very large, broad wave. Nothing's really consolidated. Nothing's really put together with this wave. You don't really have any dominant low level circulation, which would make it a depression or named storm. It's just a very large open wave popping off a lot of shower and storm development, moving steadily basically to the west right now. It's not labeled an invest right at this moment. That could change sometime in the next several hours, maybe in the next couple hours, maybe in the next one to two days. But now it's just a open tropical wave out here that's very large and has potential. This will continue to move this way in general. Could still move this way. Now I want to note there's multiple areas of energy embedded in this tropical wave. None of them are dominant areas of energy. And I do think as this sort of meanders this way, the terrain of Cuba will sort of alter these areas of energy, sort of maybe shunt them further south, further north. And I do think that has a massive player with how, how far west it gets in the Gulf of Mexico or how far east it might still get. Okay, but this is the area we are watching once this wave gets into this area. Okay, so is this going to develop? Where is it going to go? It's a big question. So that's what's going on with this tropical system right now. Let's get this back off your screen. It's a pretty healthy tropical wave right now, but no defined low-level circulation or anything like that. The latest from the National Hurricane Center. I was wrong, and I'll admit I was wrong. I thought when I made this yesterday evening's video, I thought we'd wake up to a 70% chance that this is going to develop into a depression or name storm, but they are still stuck with 60%. They'll do another update in literally about 40, 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and I do think there'll be a chance that they update this from a 60 to a 70% chance that that does happen. This will go from orange to red. I don't think they'll change the highlighted area, which that's where the actual wave is right here where the X is. This orange area right here is where they're saying it could develop into a depression or named storm. But I do think they will bump this from a 60 to a 70% chance. And folks, they might broaden this area 
because there is some confusion on where this is going to develop. But confidence is starting to increase that this is going to get on the west side of Florida which puts into the Gulf of Mexico, which, you know, we don't want anything in the Gulf of Mexico. We know what can happen when tropical systems get in the Gulf of Mexico. So the latest model guidance. So I want to, I want to just full disclaimer. I want to tell you guys this. I want to reiterate this guys. Keep in mind, please keep in mind that what I show you on here, don't tell everybody in your brother's cousins, cousins, uncle's dog, that this is exactly what's going to happen. We're still trying to kind of fumble through model guidance trying to find an average, trying to figure out what this is going to do. But what I'm about to show you with the GFS is probably one of the wildest. It's on up there. It's one of the top craziest runs for a tropical system in the tropics that I've ever seen. Okay, so we're going to start this morning. All right, so this is Thursday morning. All right, we're going to make our way into Friday morning. We got a lot of tropical energy right in here over Cuba. Okay, but this is our wave. I know it's very hard to see, but this is it right into here. This is our tropical wave. Okay, it's very just broad area of shower, showers and storms that are just continuously firing and maintaining themselves. Okay, so now as we move this in time, we get this into Saturday morning. We start to see an L popping up here. So I really think that once this gets away from the terrain of Cuba and gets closer to the Gulf of Mexico, I really think this will have a chance to start to get its act together. So we're all the way midway through the weekend at this point. This blob of energy starts to get fully into the far eastern sections of the Gulf of Mexico. And based off this run, the GFS begins to get its act together quite quickly, pretty quickly here. As we're getting into Saturday night, GFS is saying this low is 1,004 millibar low. Remember, the lower you see this number drop, the stronger the tropical system. Okay, and once you start to get closer to just a flat 1,000 millibars, you're starting to inch closer to a tropical storm status, which would make it a named storm. In this case, would make it Debbie. So this system looks like it's just cruising north and this would bring some nasty weather across the entire western side of Florida because you're going to be on what we call the dirty side of this system. Uh, this would bring outer bands, a tornado threat, a flooding risk. This deepens all the way to a 992 millibar low. I would argue that's getting close to a hurricane status. Okay and then it gets to a 987 millibar low, makes a landfall sometime this coming Sunday evening. Inside 100 hours is a 987 millibar low, kind of right where Hurricane Edalia made landfall uh, last fall, last hurricane season. So this will make it probably a Category 1 hurricane, makes a landfall, and you're thinking, okay, well, this is going to do what it has to do, do its damage, and this is going to continue to move further north and weaken, right? Well, not so fast. Still a tropical storm over southeast areas of Georgia Monday morning, August the 5th, gets back over the waters off the eastern side off the coast of the southeast of, of Georgia and South Carolina, begins to deepen again. Now it's uh, it went it rose from a th to a thousand and higher millibar uh, storm because of land interaction. Obviously, we know that weakens tropical systems. Then it gets back over the ocean waters, begins to strengthen again. That number begins to drop and drop rapidly. All of a sudden, we have a 973 millibar hurricane. Well, watch. Watch what this does. Makes landfall in Florida, gets moves over Florida, North Florida, and the southeast section of Georgia, gets back off the coast of the southeast, and this is re-strengthening to not only Category 1, Category 2, but pretty close to a major Category 3 hurricane. As we're getting into midday Wednesday, August the 7th, makes another landfall right into Jacksonville, Florida, Wednesday, cruises this back over the same area it just went over a few days prior, but it's moving due west. It still has a tropical storm over land. It's weakening, obviously. And then it tries to dip back into the Gulf of Mexico, not this weekend, but next weekend, and makes another landfall as just some sort of whatever it is. It's a freak. <laughs> um, but then it finally dissipates, and the energy is still try trying to hang around. So that is pretty wild. Let's move through that quick one more time. Here it comes, at like a normal tropical system, makes a landfall, gets back off the coast of southeast, makes a landfall as a hurricane, then just dances around the Gulf states. That's just insane. All right. Now the European, a little bit more, has a little bit more sense to it. Okay. 
we're getting into Thursday evening. This this is our wave right here. It's just a lot of unsettled weather, kind of getting unraveled. And it's uh, the terrain of Cuba, which you don't know, there's mountainous areas in Cuba, Hispaniola, uh, likes to mess with these tropical systems, okay? Uh, which is good because if we didn't have these Cuba, you know, Jamaica, Hispaniola out here in the Caribbean, it would it would be a lot of I would say there would be a lot more damage done during hurricane season on the Gulf Coastline and really anywhere uh, for the U.S. because you know, the land uh, certainly hurts these tropical systems. But we get into Saturday evening, doesn't look like a whole lot of anything. We get into Sunday morning, this blob of green here, which looks a heck of a lot less impressive than the GFS does at the same time frame, um, is our tropical system. Okay, this continues sort of get stuck in the kind of the armpit of the Gulf of Mexico, the northeast section of the Gulf of Mexico, and dances around here, gets trapped. I mean, we're all the way at this point on Monday afternoon. Nothing's really getting going at this point. Just a lot of tropical moisture over Florida. Still nothing is, and it's getting bogged down. And finally, you see an L pop off here about a week from today, like next Thursday, and this thing literally gets jammed in the Gulf of Mexico as a weak tropical system. And I'm telling you right now, there is no way in heck that if this gets trapped over the Gulf of Mexico, that it stays as weak as what the European is showing. There is no way. The energy is basically just chilling. And we're going to actually look at the 850 millibar vort here, which shows us our low level energy associated with this. And here it is. You can see it just sort of spinning around this area and it gets back over the Gulf of Mexico. There's no way it stays that weak. I'm telling you right now. The only reason it would stay that weak is if it just gets a lot of dry air and trains into the circulation, which it could if there's a dry air boundary to the north. But there's just no way, in my opinion. Okay, but the euro shows that kind of the same scenario as the GFS it just doesn't look as alarming to you because it doesn't show a major hurricane or anything like that. But it still bogs this energy down in the Gulf of Mexico. And then you look, what model we got here? The Icon model, 120 hours out. That's all we got. Same thing, tropical wave right here. CDL popping off over Cuba. This moves into um, uh, the Gulf of Mexico by this coming Sunday morning. It's a week low, 1,009 millibar low starting to strengthen somewhat as we are getting into Sunday night. And then it strengthens all the way to tropical storm status. By the time we're getting to Monday morning, makes a landfall into the Panhandle, Florida, Monday morning. Not a huge deal, a weaker tropical system. And But what is it going to do after that? It only goes out 120 hours, and it's kind of following the same route as a GFS. We don't know if this system is about to get pushed back over off the waters of the southeast, get pushed back south, or if it's just going to continue to weaken as it moves inland and head towards the Carolinas. So the icon, not too crazy, but we only have it 120 hours out. Now, what about the Canadian model? Okay. Canadian model, which does not have great verification scores with the tropics, but here it comes. Takes kind of the same similar route as all the other model guides I just showed you. Uh, kind of weak, kind of strengthens it pretty quick, like the GFS as we're getting into Sunday morning. You already have a tropical storm at this point. We're getting into Sunday evening. It deepens this to a moderate size moderate moderate and strength tropical storm and makes landfall into florida sometime sunday night and monday morning and uh does it pretty much weakens this as it cruises over georgia into the carolinas monday and a tuesday and it kind of tries to push it back over uh out and off the waters of the southeast okay so what about the i uh the i'm sorry not the icon what about uh the uk met model i don't show you this much I'm just kind of showing you all the scenarios. Well, the UK MET model is very far west. It takes a very weak tropical depression or weak tropical storm and makes landfall right into Alabama and Mississippi sometime next Monday night and a Tuesday morning. Nothing too crazy about it. Just a weak tropical system. Like I've said many times, it's hard for me to believe that we're not going to have some strengthening at least into a tropical storm of this system once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Very hard for me to believe. So what about the European Ensemble? So we're going to start this off for uh, uh, Saturday night. Okay, the EPS, the European Ensemble, makes up 51 members. That's not 51 human beings or, or anything like that. It just makes up 51 members and makes up an average or a mean. Okay, and this model output, we have all those potential members that do form out of the EPS, the 51 members, that's put on a screen for us. So if the member forms, you're going to see an L. 
um, for the most part, okay, if it's strong enough. So European Ensemble has, uh, I don't know, 30, 40% of the members getting into the Gulf of Mexico, but you see the number of L's that you see on your screen begins to increase. They're kind of grouped together, but, and you know, you got some of them almost trying to get all the way to Southeast Louisiana. You got some all the way into the uh, Big Bend areas of Florida, but if you notice, there's not really any off the coast of the Southeast anymore. Uh, 24 hours ago, uh, most of these were off the coast of the southeast. Now they're all getting into the Gulf of Mexico, but they're all pretty weak. They're all above a thousand millibars. This is what this is when it gets crazy. These spaghetti's models uh, get wild at this point. These members start to get affected by this high pressure to the north, and then get pushed back south. They get pushed sideways. They get pushed uh, uh, west, east. Um, well, west, east, and back south. I mean, some of them can ex find an escape route. Like like this little member right here is like, hey, you know, I found a little escape route and it's heading on out. But even it's still doing some weird kind of wigglies right in here. And then we continue to move this forward. And you just notice how all these members are sort of just buckling and going crazy directions. There's not a clean sweep through of members that are just kind of going like this. Okay. You're getting none of that. Instead, you're getting this. And then all of this. Okay. <laughs> so the the reason I'm going to talk to you about why it's doing that here in a second. So that's, that's on the steering currents timestamp. It'll help you guys understand why we're seeing this. And if we look at the latest um, OOZ GFS run, this makes up 21 runs, uh, 21 members, GEFS, GFS ensemble. Okay. Same thing. We get these members up into the central and Eastern Gulf of Mexico. All right. Some of them make an actual landfall, but then once again, they all get bogged down. And a lot of these members actually get pushed set back south, pushes them back over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Even the ones off the coast of the south, these guys, they get kind of shunted south. None of them hardly just go straight into the southeast and then weaken. A lot of them get pushed back in, back out back out into the Gulf of Mexico, actually strengthen. Some of these get to a 987, 998 millibar low. And then these members just go absolutely everywhere after that. It looks just like the European Ensemble. It's just everywhere. Okay. So wild stuff, guys, really is. Um, that's the latest on model, guys. Now let's talk about what could promote strengthening with the system. Okay. Something that uh, most people know if you're kind of in tune with the weather. And most people, I, I would imagine if you're tuning into this video, you at least have somewhat of an interest with weather or you're concerned. But if you didn't know, uh, sea surface temperatures are well above average. Um, and then warm sea surface temperatures support um, a, a tropical system, promote strengthening. Okay, so this is in Celsius. I know a lot of people watching this might measure it in Fahrenheit. Um, so in Celsius, you see in this like 29 to 30 degrees Celsius right here, that's temperatures in Fahrenheit in like the mid 80s. Okay, and that is exactly where this tropical energy is right into here right now. It's basically over record warm, a record warm body of water for this time of the year for August 1st standards, which happy August, by the way, cruising a little bit closer to the fall, which I'm very happy about. Uh, but this is where this is going, potentially. Okay, look at this body of water, 31, 32 degrees Celsius. That's temperatures in like the upper 80s in Fahrenheit. Uh, getting close to 90 degrees degrees when you get close to like Tampa Bay and Clearwater and, and like the Florida Keys, okay? You don't want anything getting there, okay? And that's not the only thing that, you know, that you need for tropical systems developing. There's other factors too, and that's what, what we're actually about to talk about. But, I mean, very warm sea surface temperatures. Just go on and check that off the box, right? And then we look at the upper wind pattern, guys, and this part can throw some people for a loop. That's what I'm here for, to try to explain things where you guys can understand. So these are winds, um, 35, 40,000 feet up in the air, 200 millibars. And we kind of look at this when we, we can look at this for multiple things, steering currents. We can look at this for the upper wind pattern, more importantly, uh, shear. Uh, so one thing I want you to note is this is for like this coming Saturday night and a Sunday morning. And it shows an L here, and this is the EPS. So this creates an average of all those members and an average location and an average strength. And its average is right about here. But that low could very well be right here. I mean, it could be right here. It could be down here. Um, we're just not sure. Okay, so let's just pretend Saturday night, the low is right about right here. Okay, 
So what we know about low pressure in the Northern Hemisphere, and I know for people who's been tuning in for the last several videos like Mitch, man, you are explaining the same thing over and over again. I have to. It helps me, and it helps people who are just now tuning in understand what's going on. So I think it's important just to reiterate myself, repeat myself over and over again. And even for people who keep tuning in, some people just might not understand the first few times I say it, and all of a sudden it clicks uh, the next time. So... These rotate in a cyclonic flow, just like this in the Northern Hemisphere. That's how these tropical systems go. That's how low pressure goes, okay? So above this storm, if you look really closely, there's lines with arrows embedded in it. These arrows are kind of pointing in the opposite direction, right? Okay, just like this. So cyclonically, this tropical system's spinning. Anticyclonically, in the upper levels of the atmosphere above this system because it's the low to mid levels of how it's spinning kind of cyclonically, right? It's the upper levels where it's spinning the opposite direction. So this system has a favorable outflow, favorable upper wind pattern that supports air being pushed out away from that center of circulation. So this is allowing for more air to rise. So as air is getting pushed back away, this allows room for more air to rise. And it's just a continuous cycle that promotes rising air, which rising air promotes shower and storm development uh, we kind of learned that in like i think elementary school middle school i'm sure i understand a lot of people don't retain that kind of information but sinking air uh, doesn't support shower and storm action stagnant air uh, rising air does so in this case you have a pretty favorable upper wind pattern overhead with this system now this system's probably still dealing with some sort of shear and i wouldn't be surprised if it would deal some with some shear to the north and northwest of this system with some sort of boundary in place up here okay but all tropical systems, no tropical system has a perfect upper wind pattern. But this one is going to have a pretty good one. I think the thing that's going to disrupt this in kind of the short to medium term is land interaction. You got land here, southern tip of Florida. You got Hispaniola in the shorter term. That's going to just pretty much prevent it from strengthening in the, in the next few days. That's why there's only like a 10% chance for this to develop in the next two days whether there's like a 60 to 70% chance. And I say 70 because I do think it'll change in the next seven days, okay? So that's the environment that could support this to eventually strengthen. Now, what about the steering currents? Remember, this is the part of the video where I told you guys is, is important, right? So this is starting off, let's take it into, let's take it into uh, this evening. So our lower pressure is right into here. Okay, I will explain the area and um, the warmer colors you see, like the reds, the shades of reds, and even the salmon kind of pinkish color, that's higher pressure. The blues you're going to see on your screen, which you don't see any right now, that's lower pressure. So another way you can say this, uh, with high pressure, you can call it a ridge. Okay, with lower pressure, you can call it a, it could be a tropical system, it could be an upper trough, an upper low, um, but it's lower pressure. And flow around both features is different. So our broad tropical wave is right in here, okay? And it's being steered, and I'll just draw that L again. It's being steered by the flow around this high pressure, which around high pressure, the flow goes like this. And this, this high pressure is very, uh, very weak. So the flow is pretty stagnant right now over the Atlantic. And I expect there to be even more of that in the future of this system. You see how you have a darker shade of red or, or pink right in here? That's where you have probably a more substantial flow around this. Okay, but we're speaking of this right here, but that's a good example. And you're gonna see that come up on your screen later on. Okay, so this is being steered by the light flow around this high pressure. The system's moving pretty slow right now. Okay, we continue to move forward. All right, we get into, let's take it all the way into Saturday morning. So our tropical wave, whatever it is, is probably somewhere into here at this point. At this point, it's still moving west. But also at this point, it begins to feel a weakness right into here. You don't see those shades of red or warmer colors anymore, but you do see this blob of blue showing up at the top of your screen. That is an upper low, upper trough, whatever you want to call it. It's an area of low pressure. And this is digging down, creating a weakness in this ridge temporarily. And I say that for a reason, the setup one I'm going to say here in the next few minutes. So this system begins to sniff out that weakness. Okay. It begins to feel that weakness. And that is why it begins to turn north right into here in most model guidance, because this 
trough digging down creates that weakness in the pattern, breaks that ridge open. So this system's like, okay, I, can, I feel the weakness. I feel an escape route. But if you don't know, tropical systems like to get poleward. They like to gain latitude, especially a stronger system. It's always going to want to fight to go north. Okay, so get it back off and we keep this rolling. So all of a sudden you see that blue pop off on your screen here. And I'm showing the GFS, by the way, because I want to show you why it shows the wackiest scenario. This, the reason there's a more deeper blue showing up here is because there's now a stronger low pressure in place. So you're going to see more of blue in place. And at this point, you know, the GFS is saying we almost have a tropical storm Saturday night and a Sunday morning. So this system looks like, okay, I'm heading north. There's a wide open weakness still in place right into here. Okay, this thing looks like it's got an easy escape route, going to make a landfall. GFS says, hey, a strong tropical storm. Category one hurricane. We can handle that. Still does a lot of damage, but watch what happens. We're going to actually flip this and get a little bit more of a northerly view here. So there, like I said, wide open weakness right here. You got ridging off over here. You got ridging off over here, but there's no ridging here. It's a nice weakness for this to just go on. All right, easy like Sunday morning. I'm going to escape out here and uh, weekend and then fade into oblivion. Okay, but unfortunately, what happens here? As you keep this going, there's still a nice weakness here. Unfortunately, what happens is this ridging, as we're getting in the Monday morning, begins to build on top of this system. Okay, and the flow around this ridge is going just like that. There's still a little bit of a weakness here, but it's not substantial enough. And all of a sudden, okay, this, our tropical system, which is right in here, starts to feel kind of the negative it's almost like gears guys but it starts to get pushed almost back to the west because of the flow on this is basically wrapping around and 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 moving east to west so our system is going to feel that pool that's coming from the flow with the ridge on top of it okay so we were also getting a bit of a pull from this ridging right here most likely also okay so you continue to move and you think, okay, well, if this is a, I think if this is kind of still a hurricane right in here, I think it could try to escape still. And I still think this might be a little off, but you continue to move this forward. Okay. Ridging tries to almost build on top of this system at this point. You actually got a little bit of ridging right on top of the system. So you kind of got a flow that's kind of doing like all of this and like this. So the flow really gets stagnant for our system. It's like, dude, I have no idea what I want to do. The only escape route I, I see is maybe to go a little bit back to the south because the flow to the north does not support it going north. And this trough will not dig down far enough to break open this ridge again. Okay, so what's going to happen with this system? Well, it gets kind of pushed back south. Now, let me tell you something. This is what I don't believe with the GFS. OK, at this point, at this point right here, for example, this is around next Wednesday morning as an all out hurricane off the coast of Georgia. To me, in my personal opinion, this is enough of a weakness for this to go on an escape outward. I don't believe that it just flat out doesn't feel this huge weakness right here and just kind of stays down here. But it could be far enough away from that to not feel it. And it also is still getting pulled by the flow around this ridge right here. So this is still feeling the effects of this. But I just don't know. Because if you do have a pretty formidable hurricane at this point, it's going to want to fight to go back north. Okay. So, but I still think it's feeling this and this specific run. Okay. So it kind of gets nudged back, back west. Right. And it doesn't help that. I mean, you, you kind of got the flow around this ridge right here that's kind of going like this too, okay? So this is actually probably helping to push this back to the west too, all right? I know it's kind of confusing, guys. The flow around this trough is going like this, flow around this ridge going like that, okay? If we still had uh, orange showing up right over here, for example, see if you had this kind of orange, reddish color showing up right here, the flow would be going like this, okay? High pressure, anti-cyclonic, low pressure, cyclonically in this in the northern, northern hemisphere. So it's very wild. But in general, the flow is pretty stagnant right in here.
But it's hard for me to believe if there's a weakness on up here that this isn't going to cruise north or back or when it's, you know, back over here when it's over at this portion of the, like a little bit earlier next week. OK, but that's kind of why it does what it does. It, it, it makes sense. But at the same time, I have some questions on it. I do. So it's it's very wacky, guys. Um, But it's all about trying to figure out high pressure on top of the system, around the system, how stagnant are steering currents, how strong or weak is it uh, in certain areas uh, that it feels or doesn't feel the steering currents. It's a big question, guys. It really is. <laughs> That's all I got on that. Let's talk about what's going to happen weather-wise for today. We're going to kind of skim through this pretty quick as uh, i got to get on off the work but we'll try to get detailed with you folks but we do have showers and storms cruising through the midwest illinois some shower and storm activity across areas of uh, minnesota and uh, wisconsin we got some storms on going west of the gaps here in the ohio valley a little bit of shower activity in the southern plains a little bit of shower activity in the southwest also um, but that's what's going on right now as we continue to have this kind of northwest flow uh, pattern uh, that's driving the pattern uh, Watches, warnings, and advisories basically dominated by heat. The orange, those are heat advisories. The burgundy color, like you see here in the mid-Atlantic, upper southeast, that's excessive heat watches. The, the purple color, like along the Mississippi River that you see, excessive heat warnings, very hot, humid conditions. The green, that is flood watches. And yeah, I mean, that's about that's about it. A lot of heat alerts and, uh, you know, flash flooding alerts and fl uh, flood watches up right now that's really what's dominating the pattern uh, the excessive rainfall outlook in the yellow area that's where we need we do, need to be the most concerned about we have a 15 percent risk of uh, flash flooding uh, being exceeded within 25 miles in the given location so if you live in the midwest down to like uh, the appalachian mountains uh, you certainly want to watch out for flooding with this and then the storm prediction center um the latest information we have says we got a slight risk across the Midwest and the sections of the Ohio Valley covering most of Kentucky. Level two out of five risk, marginal risk, kind of scrawny area that goes all the way back to like the front range, all the way across the mid-Atlantic areas of the southeast, all the way up to areas of the upper Midwest. Tornado risk, if you live in the green, which includes Chicago, almost up to Green Bay, Indianapolis, Louisville, Cincinnati, Columbus, uh, St. Louis, 2% risk of a tornado today. And then the wind threat, 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour if you live in the yellow area. And then the hail threat, just a 5% risk, not a huge threat of hail for today, but I'm sure some people will get it. The southeast today, a broad look at things. Uh, we got tropical moisture downpours across Florida today, no different than any other day in the summer. We're going to have some storms that probably will fire on the on the eastern side of the mountains and kind of the western Carolinas, upstate South Carolina, western North Carolina today, some storms will be ongoing. Some storms on the western side of the mountains too with more of a hefty complex of storms that will once again probably surge through Kentucky, impact areas of eastern Tennessee, eastern Kentucky later today. But we could get some more storms, the more so fire up like the Boot Hill, Missouri, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, northern Arkansas today. You guys have not really seen a whole lot. That's going to be more so for tonight. A little bit closer look at the Southern Apps region. There's those storms right there that gets going here in the Western Carolinas. Strong and severe, definitely a possibility with tons of heating in the Carolinas today in the Southeast. We have to watch all these storms in Eastern Kentucky. This is around four to 5 p.m. More, I would say potent line of storms moves in late tonight. Once again, these same areas, you guys in Kentucky have been blasted lately. Uh, throughout this entire week. 8 p.m. storms moving through uh, Lexington, Kentucky, getting down to Bowling Green, getting into eastern uh, Kentucky, oozing down into northeast Tennessee. And uh, then we just have to watch for any kind of dwindling, dwindling leftover shower and storm activity overnight. Winds, we could get some gusty 30, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts with these storms throughout Kentucky, even getting into Tennessee, southern Indiana areas of West Virginia and some of these storms in the Western Carolinas could pack a punch to eventually ooze into the Central Carolinas. So be aware of that. Um, the updraft Felicity swath, certainly these areas indicate where we can have some rotating updrafts. We could get a few tornado warnings into Kentucky, Northern, I'm sorry, Southern Indiana today. Watch out with some rotation with these storms where you see these highlighted colors. Temperatures today are going to be brutal, guys. I mean, these are temp just air temperatures well into the 90s. All the way up into the mid-Atlantic, the Carolinas, Georgia, the deep south, Tennessee. The heat index will be miserable, obviously, also with the heat indices getting well over 100 degrees for 
pretty much everybody in the deep south and the southeast. So be aware of that. The northeast today, we're going to get some pop-up downpours that are, really can happen for anybody, especially Vermont, New Hampshire, up in the main. Um, but I think more put together shower and storm activity will be ongoing in Ohio, southern Michigan, um, later uh, this evening. Not a big concern with these storms at all. Uh, getting into western PA overnight tonight, some shower and storms are possible. And then we get into tomorrow morning, an area of disturbed weather could uh, be greeting you guys in western PA, some showers and storms, very possible. I don't think it'll be a big concern really anywhere in this area of the country today. Now, the south central U.S., pretty quiet day of weather. We could, as the ridge is beginning to flatten out, Starting to get a little bit of flow to enter the pitcher. So a little bit of storm activity in the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas. Storms are definitely likely in northern New Mexico. And then as we're getting into deep into tonight, no, uh, kind of northeast Arkansas, southeast Mizzou, the Boot Hill, Missouri, could get some storms later tonight that could wake you guys up in the middle of the night. Then we'll wake up tomorrow morning with quieter conditions. Temperatures will be quite hot. Dallas will hit 100. Oklahoma City, Tulsa, same thing. Uh, brutal heat, even if your air temperature doesn't hit 100, uh, the heat indices will be absolutely unbearable. Heat index will be 105, 112 degrees from Oklahoma City to Tulsa. Uh, just brutal humidity in the state of Oklahoma today. I think it will have everybody just about beat. Just about. Um, the north central U.S. Storms will continue to cruise through this morning across northern Wisconsin. Uh, and then we'll get those storms that will refire here and pretty much anywhere in Indiana, Indianapolis, down to Evansville, anybody in Indiana. We'll get some storms that will fire here. And southern to, I would say, eastern sections of Wisconsin that will form as far east as, as far as west as like eastern Iowa, drift back into like Milwaukee, Chicago later this evening. We'll have an opportunity for some storms. And then we get into tomorrow morning, quieter conditions. A little bit closer look at all this storm activity. There's all those storms from Janesville, I mean, up to Green Bay, getting close to Rockford, getting into the Milwaukee area, Chicago, later this evening. Some storms will be ongoing in southern lower Michigan late tonight. Uh, some storms could drift back through Indiana later tonight. It's the wee hours of the morning. And uh, then we're waking up to some showers in Indiana tomorrow. And then we move a little bit further into the Ohio Valley areas of the Midwest. Those are storms that could be possible in Indiana later tonight. I'm sorry, later this morning. Then we just have to watch these storms. I mean, some of these look like supercells in like southeastern Illinois, southwestern Indiana. Uh, watch out Indianapolis. You want to watch out for any of these storms. If you live in southern Indiana today, these storms will probably be the most. Th this will be an area of the country will see the, the worst of the storms. I think southern Indiana. Uh, I think all hazards could be on the table earlier in the early in the storm mode cycle, and then this will eventually structure into a line of storms as it gets into Kentucky, become more of a damaging wind threat, heavy rain, frequent lightning. But there's those uh, more storms firing up up in the Midwest later on this afternoon into this evening, really more so into the overnight hours. But uh, this is the winds. Really, anybody to get storms could get 30, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds, guys. Um, and then you look at the updraft felicity swath of this area, and it's going to show what I'm talking about here. It likes southern Indiana areas of Illinois to see the highest chance of a tornado or two today. So be aware if you live in this area. The western U.S. could get some widespread showers and storms in areas of Arizona, especially central to southeastern Arizona, northern New Mexico. Everybody else, though, it's not going to get anything. Some showers could drift into Las Vegas later tonight. Outside of that, guys, the weather's pretty quiet out west. Temperatures hot all the way up into the mid-Atlantic. I mean, might hit 90 in Boston a day. Pocket of cooler air in the Midwest, upper Midwest. The ridge is beginning to flatten, but everybody's still south of the ridge boundary, getting well into the 90s, the low 100s. Brutal humidity, soupy air. And then out west, it's pretty much warm everywhere, guys. I mean, no, nobody's really brutally hot, but everybody's pretty hot out west. I mean, just pretty warm conditions, so... That's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all, and y'all have a wonderful day.